There were 400 Dixieland jazz enthusiasts on board the 2,000-guest Constellation cruise ship for a 14-day cruise through the Panama Canal. This video is part two of a three-part series in which I try to show the jazz activities provided on board as well as the towns we visited at Ports of Call. This is the Grand Dominion Jazz Band performing in the Reflections Lounge one afternoon while we were at sea. I have posted eight different tunes on YouTube played by the principal bands on this cruise. These eight tunes are not shown in this three-part video, but can be seen by going to the website listed at the end of this video. The cruise started in San Diego and stopped in Cabo San Lucas, Acapulco, Huatulco, Punta Arenas, the Panama Canal, Cartagena, and finally Fort Lauderdale. On this day, we visit Punta Arenas, Costa Rica. Right at the ship's dock is a broad and long sandy beach. We arrived on Sunday. The beach was packed. Along the beach near the dock was a flea market where vendors displayed a variety of local products hoping to tempt the tourists. I walked into town to get away from the tourists. The residential streets were lined with trees, vegetation, and flowers. Another feature of Punta Arenas are the metal fences used to separate the houses from the street. Many homes used razor wire. The town is built on a finger of land. I walked along the far side of the finger at low tide and looked at the boats. There's a ferry that takes people and cars out to outlying islands. It was loading when I walked by, and later I watched it leave. There were novice fishermen on one dock trying their luck that Sunday afternoon. I saw some wildlife. I don't know the name of this bird, but here's a lizard. This Sunday, there was a big soccer game in the stadium. At halftime, fans went out into the street to buy food and drink. I met a lot of nice people. At a bar, this couple danced for me. I walked back to the ship. John Goodrich and Carla West gave a workshop. The tune we're looking at, Honeysuckle Girls, is an exercise in what we call the 2 5 1 chord progression. And we're in the key of F. <laughs> okay. So the 2 chord is G, the 5 chord is C, and the 1 chord is F. 
And that's the beginning of the tune, and that's the progression which repeats itself several times in the course of the tune. And it's the primary way of getting to the next chord. And the circle of fifth simply indicates that. Um, whatever key you're playing in, you locate that on the circle. And so the next most important chords are the ones on either side. If you're playing in F as we are, then you will be very, you will expect to see both the B flat and the C chords. And the next one you'll see most often is the G chord, which is over there. But everything is right up there where the F chord is. Everything is close to it. And you're not going to get very far away from F on the circle as you go through the tune. One more little thing. And I need you for this. Uh, Fats Waller, who wrote this tune, I don't know if he was a trained composer or a theoretician. I you know how much technical knowledge he actually had. But he hit right at the beginning of this tune. He hit on one of the uh, greatest examples of building harmonic tension that that you ever see in a pop tune. Instead of immediately resolving all these chords to the one, instead of going two, seven, five, seven, one, he goes two, seven, five, seven, back to two, and build it up, make it, make it more, more demanding until you finally get to that F chord. Boy, what a relief. <laughs> and that's what, that's what dissonance does. It chopsticks. If all you do is play those two notes, it drives you nuts after a little while until, ah, resolves. That's the whole thing about harmonic chord progressions. It's a creation of tension, creation of dissonance, and the resolution of that dissonance. And that's true whether you're talking about Beethoven or Fats Waller. No. All of you that have instruments, why don't you just uh, get ready to play? We're just going to play the chord changes, and if you know what your instrument's typical voicing is in a chord, trombones typically play the fifth, the reed players typically play the third, and cornet players usually play the root of the chord. Let's just go through the chord changes. We won't worry about playing the melody. Just play half notes, basically. Just play half notes on each chord change. Next door, Tim Allen was working with his banjo players.
or, or Polish or whatever. Songs were Lichtenstein or songs. Shine on Harvest Moon. Turn of the century Americana now. Let's try this. Key of G. One afternoon, a different group of musicians, picked from various of the bands and some of the instructors, got together and played for our listening and dancing pleasure. On the days we were at sea, there were scheduled jazz-related events to attend from 8 in the morning until 10.30 at night. When we were in port, the main scheduled event started at 4.45 in the afternoon.